Christmas is a magical time each year. There are traditions and celebrations that have special meanings for each and every one of us. For instance, if you find a mistletoe and happen to stand under it, maybe the love of your life just might join you and give you a special kiss. If you put out milk and cookies beside the Christmas tree on Christmas Eve, you can be sure Santa will definitely show up at your house. And if you hang up a stocking on the fireplace or somewhere else, Santa will be sure to put an extra gift in it just for you. And if your mom puts a big turkey in the oven on Christmas Day and has potatoes and vegetables cooking on the stove and she has already baked fresh bread as well as delicious apple and mincemeat pies, well, you just know you're going to eat the best meal of the year. We all know that December is a very, very hectic month at Santa's workshop way up at the North Pole. But did you know that during the very first year of Santa's workshop, things were much more hectic and not everyone was happy to work there. It was during Santa's first Christmas season that everything changed when a hectic chain of events took place during one near disastrous week. Now, let me tell you the real story of how the North Pole workshop of Santa and his elves changed for the better and became the happy place it is today. First of all, local T-O-Y-S of the Polar Brotherhood of Working Elves sent a letter to Santa and demanded that the jolly fat guy slow down the speed of the production line by 30% so the elves didn't get tired out so quickly and that would reduce the chance for job related accidents. And if Santa didn't agree, the union would get their fellow unions all over the world to create strikes at all the manufacturing places that produced the parts that Santa needed to make all his toys. I mean, imagine if there was a strike at the Pleasant View Plastics Factory. I mean, how would the elves be able to make Rydum toys or little toys or even the winter sleighs for boys and girls? And if there was a strike at the Point Leamington Woodworks, my goodness, how would the elves make toboggans or even winter sleighs? And, well, they wouldn't even be able to make hockey sticks. And you know, if there was a strike at the Glover's Harbor steel plant, I mean, the elves wouldn't be able to make those wonderful steel trucks for all the little boys. And imagine the disaster if there was a strike at the leading Tickles wig and dress factory. I mean, how would the elves make the beautiful dresses and hair for the cute dolls that all little girls love to play with? So, Santa thought about their demands and then agreed to make the changes. The very next day, Dr. Sarah Hoof Santa's veterinarian, you know, the lady doctor in charge of all the reindeer, informed Santa that all the reindeer were sick with the flu and that they might not be healthy enough to fly on Christmas Eve. Imagine that! No reindeer! Well, Santa quickly asked some of his most trusted elves to visit Glorious Pharmacy Department in Leading Tickles, Newfoundland, and to get the necessary medicine to cure the reindeer. I'm happy to say that the journey was a success and all the reindeer recovered. The very next day, Charlie Sparky Watts, Santa's reliable yet very busy electrician, informed Santa that Rudolph Snows 
had a short in it and it just wouldn't light up, which would of course make it impossible for Rudolph to lead the way on Christmas Eve. I can't even imagine it. No Rudolph. Well, you guessed it. Those trusted elves had to make another trip to Leading Tickles Newfoundland, this time to Gloria's hardware section to purchase the necessary electrical parts to repair Rudolph's nose. And once again, the trip was a success. Well, on top of all these distractions, the very next day, Mrs. Claus began to nag at Santa about his weight and how he really needed to go on a diet. I mean, she just couldn't understand why he always ate cookies at every meeting, at every meal, at every coffee break, at everybody's house on Christmas Eve. Well, you get the idea. He just loved cookies and milk. I mean, after all, he is Santa Claus. Well, by the end of the week, Santa was very grumpy and he was trying to relax after his stressful week and he really just wanted to be left alone. Suddenly, he heard someone knocking at his front door. So Santa sighed and went to the door. He opened it and looked out to see who was there. Santa gazed down upon the cutest little angel he had ever seen. And she had brought a tree to Santa. And she looked up at Santa with her beautiful eyes and said, Santa, here is the tree you wanted to use for Christmas. Where would you like me to stick it? And now, boys and girls, you really do know the true story of how an angel became the top decoration on the world's very first official Christmas tree. Well, that's story time for today. But remember, this is the time of year to think about your family and friends. And we all need to do our part to make the Christmas season the special celebration where we share love and happiness with one and all. Merry Christmas, everybody.